Okie dokie, round two of our uh, little on water live videos. So uh, what we've done now is we've moved into just around Sovereign Island uh, and, and fishing deeper with, with the plastic. So uh, I'll hand over to George, he can run you through what he's doing. You can land a couple of smaller fish, but um, yeah, run us through what your technique and what you're doing there, because it's working. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if it's working. They're pretty small fish, but um, oh, many moons ago, um, Tim Morgan come out with, you know, this was a prototype many years ago when uh, Tim smashed him at TSS. So I brought a little packet along, only a little, uh, little shark for his wife and golf. Um, I find these work a bit better in deeper water because you know, the profile gets in the sink quicker. Um, fishing pretty light, four pound. Um, just throwing up against the rocks and just find a little shake and pops down the, down the rock wall. It's pretty much bait fishing, I suppose you say, a bit dead sticking and just wait for the bite. Uh, and they don't strike too hard. <laughs> yeah, we've both lost. I uh, lost a couple up further, and you've um, been busted off once. And it's it's a pretty finicky bite, isn't it? You got to have that. You do have to really watch the line, and uh, you can't just sort of just strike at them because you sort of got to load them up. So yeah, yeah. I made that mistake with the ones just before. I uh, just I don't know, played it fishing. You you strike, and uh, I think the. And reflexes took over, and I struck, and I think I snapped him off. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, the next one I got, I um, yeah, didn't strike too hard. I loaded him up, so. Oops, don't wake, yeah. At least it was a three meter flatty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so we'll watch you have a bit of a cast and, and watch the retrieve and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully, um, yeah, it'll give the guys that, you know, a bit of an idea of how you're fishing it and that kind of thing. So. Yep, so getting it in sort of, yeah, probably three, probably four, five feet from the wall. Yeah, no, and let it sort of. Close, it is rocky there. Just watching the line. Yep. Uh, little shakes. Watch the waves from the other boats. Yep, this guy's flying by. And, uh, yeah, just let it hit the bottom and. Uh... Oh, there we go. What, uh, what weight jacket are you using? 112, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So, yeah, we had the good oil from Brucey. He was saying that uh, 112 UK on on the outside of Sovereign were working. So, um, but yeah, just and the idea there is just yeah, you know, basically just let it flutter down the down the side there and, and the fish. Yeah, Nice. All right. Let's see you hook one. Just really want to sort of focus a little on that reel on that uh, retrieve. Yeah. Well, not, well, not what I'm used to with uh, bloody fishing. <laughs> but like, it. but I guess like a lot of guys, uh, I know I'm um, speaking to Dave White and that before. You know, they you, you guys cut your teeth on brim fishing, and and a lot of the techniques that you use, or you know the have refined over the years come from that basic that basic learning how to fish you know like and so whether it's brim or whatever species you can adapt that to you know the, the species that you're actually targeting so yeah well I, I did I targeted brim when I first started and even around these actual sovereign islands you know with um, atomic grubs back in the day with mm. um, oh, I don't know, brown crawdad and amber little, little uh, two inch grub that was a lure at the time and was that back when Mr. Twister was the guy for flathead? <laughs> a little bit after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, That's so back I, when I started off with Brim and, um, yeah, I know, I just started uh, getting into flathead fishing and uh, really enjoyed the flathead fishing, but um, this has been quite fun. You know, we've caught a few and hopefully we'll get a few more. Yeah, we're trying. We might even go for a bit of a flathead fish later. We can't oh. help, maybe we'll help ourselves, will we? <laughs> I watch the master in, in action. <laughs> He'll be like, it, I'll take it to Jason Swain's spot. <laughs> uh, g'day, Brett. He's online watching. Horner? Yeah, Brett Horner, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. Um, it is getting used to the, the the difference in the in the poundage and and even setting your drag like you know it's around that sort of you can't have that real drag set to right. you know because otherwise they'll just they'll just do you and especially around this rocky stuff and that as well you've sort of got to play the fish out a bit and they, they, they bites seem to be coming out a little bit too though aren't they there's some fish on the sound of there and bits and pieces so
Yeah, yeah, they're not as, certainly not as big as the ones we got earlier on, so. But yeah, it's not a bad day. We've had a little bit of rain, but um, the, the wind's actually uh, been good. Boat traffic's not too bad. The bloody traffic this morning, or the way to launch, was um, was terrible. It was, uh, um, so many boats there, and luckily jagged the park, so. But most of them were all going offshore anyway, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, so we just span around, you can sort of see, um, you know, obviously you've got the, the canal coming out, the, the tide pushing out, creating a little bit of a back eddy, which is why the fish would be holding in there as well. So, this is, um, I guess it's a fish brain, isn't it? it yeah, you know, it's, it's around that, you know, like you learn that as a young fellow what to look for and where to fish, and you can adapt that as well to, to different. Spots, I think it's a good start. Yeah, and there's the old adage, no, no run, no fun. So certainly a um, bit of, I know, um, yeah, there's been many a brim comp running this canal system through here and it's, you know, the guys talk. I think uh, Josh Bell, the one, the last one, talked about um, fishing sovereign and, and it was in that canal system in there where he caught his fish, but he said once that water started pushing, he started catching the fish. So yeah, yeah it definitely I makes a difference. Like I did earlier on when I was a young fella, I was a non-boater and uh, he took me into this canal system and uh, it was a bit fanatical. He actually um, used to get a hypodermic needle and uh, remember the stimulate he used to get in the jar? Like mm -hmm. the clear stimulate? Yep. He used to get a hypodermic needle and inject his, his plastic with this um, stimulate. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Liquid you know, Viagra. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, I'd never have thought of that. And yeah. This is, uh, you know, you're doing these, do these competitions and you learn stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know? And that, that's why if you go to different anglers, you always learn as well. So. Yep, for sure. Yes, there's some guys that have got some um, real tick tricks of the trade and, and little nuances that uh, that sort of set them out. We we're even talking before about the um, the importance of electronics, you know, and how that even that nowadays is really setting some of the the elite guys apart from you know the the, the person that can um, you know read and understand their electronics and, and find those fish and, and even you know we we talked about um, CMAP Genesis and that kind of thing and. Even like just going along and all of a sudden seeing a little bump or a hump or something, you go, oh, what's that? And you can mark it and go and look at it and yeah. all of a sudden you have this fish sitting on it and whatever else. So there's all these little things that, that over time um, you learn and, and can certainly uh, make a difference. So I've got a question there from Joanne, uh, when's the brim comp? Uh, well, that's part of what we're gonna talk about today in the committee meeting and work out dates, but we're hoping, I'm hoping uh, in, the, in certain, so the next month we'll have our, be able to have our first comp, but uh, like I said, we've got to work out how we do that safely uh, and also um, in, you know, complying with the, the Gold Coast City Council. So we'll see how we go uh, with that and we'll work out a plan. And uh, and, it, and it can change as well because, you know, as soon as um, Anastasia, Anastasia Palaszczuk you know, relaxes the border then and numbers, and it, it can change again. So we've got to, I guess, work within what the guidelines we've been dealt and, and try and do it, like I said, safely and, and whatever else. So, um, yeah. But, Alrighty, well, um, we will do another one a bit later before we get off the water and hope that was helpful. Um, like I said, this time of year, the, the brim are deep, you know, but I think um, along here, I think even they get them all year round. I think I, I don't really fish here much, but um, you know, I think they, they pretty much all sit along here. And for that reason, you know, there's food source and that kind of thing, so all good. Alrighty, talk later, yeah. bye.